to a skylark, P.B. Shelley. The joyous song of the skylark is compared to many beauteous things, not least the comparison to the words of a poet and a desire to learn the skills that make the skylark admired and listened to. There is writing in the margins. To memorize one, verse 1 to 4, Blythe is happy. Simile, like a cloud of fire, the blue deep, it's like ocean and sky. Even is evening, silver sphere is moon. Vernal is spring. Chorus hymnal, wedding. Love, sad, satiety, experience, like Shelley's own life. Imp, the impression, and again, IMP. To a skylark. Hail to thee, blithe spirit, bird thou never wert that from heaven or near it pours thy full heart in profuse strains of unpremeditated art. Higher still and higher from the earth thou springst like a cloud of fire, the blue deep thou wingest and singing still thou soar and soaring ever singest. In the golden lightning of the sunken sun o'er which clouds are brightening thou dost float and run like an unbodied joy whose race is just begun. The pale purple even melts around thy flight, like a star of heaven in the broad daylight. Thou art unseen, but yet I hear thy shrill delight. Keen as are the arrows of that silver sphere, whose intense lamp narrows in the white dawn clear. Until we hardly see, we feel that it is there. All the earth and air with thy voice is loud, as when night is bare from one lonely cloud. The moon rains out her beams, and heaven is overflowed. What thou art we know not, what is most like thee. From rainbow clouds there flow not, drops so bright to see, as from thy presence showers a rain of melody. Like a poet hidden in the light of thought, singing hymns unbidden till the world is wrought, to sympathy with hopes and fears it heeded not. Like a high-born maiden in a palace tower, soothing her love-laden soul in sweet secret hour, with music sweet as love which overflows her bower, like a glow-worm golden in a dell of dew, scattering unbeholden its aerial hue among the flowers and grass which screen it from the view. Like a rose embowered in its own green leaves, by warm winds deflowered till the scent it leek gives, makes faint with too much sweet these heavy winged leaves. Sound of vernal showers o'er the twinkling grass, rain awakened flowers, all that ever was, joyous and clear and fresh, thy music doth surpass. Teach us, sprite or bird, what sweet thoughts are thine. I have never heard praise of love or wine that panted forth a flood of rapture so divine. Chorus him kneel, or triumphal chant, matched with thine would be all but an empty bond, a thing wherein we feel there is some hidden want. What objects are the fountains of thy happy strain? What fields or waves or mountains? What shapes of sky or plain? What love of thine own kind? What ignorance of pain? With thy clear keen joyance, languor cannot be, shadow of annoyance, never came near thee. Thou lovest, but ne'er knew love's sad satiety. Waking or asleep, thou of death must deem, 
things more true and deep than we mortals dream? Or how could thy notes flow in such a crystal stream? We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. Yet if we could scorn hate and pride and fear, if we were things born not to shed a tear, I know not how thy joy we ever should come near. Better than all measures of delightful sound, better than all treasures that in books are found, thy skill to poet were, thou scorner of the ground. Teach me half the gladness that thy brain must know, such harmonious madness from my lips would flow. The world should listen then, as I am listening now. <laughs>